tonight. Uh, we are, as I said, I think since 2011 and 2012, the Christian Civic League has given out the Minuteman Award to individuals that are involved in leadership in our state, whether it be as an elected official or as if it's someone that works within the government that has made a positive difference as well uh, in their role of public service. And it could be at any level, but for the most part, uh, our, uh, our, our awards have gone to either state reps, state senators, uh, uh, Bruce Poliquin, actually, when he was congressman, was also a, re a recipient of the award. But our intent in recognizing individuals with the Minuteman Award is saying a job well done. It's one thing to vote the right way, and it's one thing to reliably vote the right way, but it's another thing to actually take on the slings and arrows of either sponsoring uh, legislation or actually going out into the public and being a champion for some of these causes that we know that even in Arusa County now, uh, when you stand up uh, for certain things in, in which we find ourselves out of step uh, in this world today, even if you do it respectfully and if you do it as honestly and fair as we can, you are going to be called names and there's oftentimes a price to be paid or an anticipated price to pay. And I remember the first time I met Trey Stewart. I don't know if he remembers, but I, I was hearing about this, you know, this uh, swashbuckler uh, young guy that was the president of the student body of the University of Maine that was going to be running up here in, in Presque Isle for the, for the House, House of Representatives. And, and I hope Trey doesn't mind me telling this because it doesn't matter whether he likes it or not. But when we met, I'll tell you, this is something I really appreciate about Trey. Um, Trey, what, how old were you, 23? 22 years old when we met at Tim Hortons uh, up in Presque Isle very early in his race. And I want you to know that that meeting was not a meeting where Trey was like seeking my endorsement. Trey wasn't looking for any favors. Trey had some tough questions for me. Trey, Trey was actually talking about some of these tough issues that were, he knew that he was going to be dealing with. I was so impressed with a young man his age that was not so deferential to me and just say, well, I'm going to vote this way, I'm going to vote that way. He was formulating and, and actually determining what he had been, what he was being taught, some things that he had been exposed to that certainly were not consistent to what we, what we were necessarily espousing on some really controversial issues. And we had a very frank, productive discussion. And I'll tell you that in every term with Trey, that's the way it's been. And then when he graduated to a position of leadership as the number two uh, representative uh, in the House for the Republicans, um, again, Trey has been proactive. When there was a bad bill coming down, or maybe there was someone that needed a little pep talk, in the, on the team that uh, Trey was aware of to let me know that someone might be a little shaky on a bill or anything like that. Trey, his, his proactiveness and his effectiveness in that role belies his years. I'm really impressed with Trey. I'm so thankful that Trey and I had the uh, privilege of three years ago, I get maybe more than that. When you get old, it you know kind of goes a little faster being out with us at Colorado Springs uh, for a leadership uh, training uh, for young leaders at Focus on the Family. Uh, and he did a super job out there. And then shortly after that, when he was elevated to a leadership role, uh, I want you to know that I am looking forward uh, to, uh, I, I've just been praying that Trey is going to win this race. Uh, I make no bones about it. Uh, and by the way, Mike Carpenter is our political opponent. Uh, I'm not saying Mike Carpenter is a bad person or anything like that, but Mike Carpenter is wrong on some issues. He just, he just has a different perspective than those of us that adhere to a, bi a biblical perspective. And so I'm looking forward to seeing Trey continue to be, uh, a, an, a, not only to embrace, but to defend and promote the values that is a way for us to see a healthy, productive Maine. 
So this year, our 2020 Minuteman Award up here in Rooster County goes to Trey Stewart. Trey, would you come forward, please? And Trey, while you're coming up, I've got a word for you. I apologize for not being able to make this meeting, but I have other obligations. I want to congratulate Trey on receiving this award. He does a great job representing the county, and I'm thankful that the CCL is recognizing him. I've enjoyed working closely with him the last six years and know firsthand the difference he's making for our state. Congratulations, Trey, and that's from uh, Representative Dustin White. Trey. Thank you very much. And Trey needs to get a picture. Absolutely, so just... yeah. Um, well, thank you very much, Carol, first of all, um, and uh, thanks to all of you for taking a few uh, minutes out of your weekend to be here uh, tonight. This is fantastic, and, and Chavez, thank you so much for all your work. Um, and let me be the first to say as a legislator, and I know Chris will back me up, and Brian, when he gets there, we'll co-sponsor the bill that helps address that problem that, that you outlined in your speech. <laughs> And we'll, we'll get that taken care of, okay? And we, we will work on it. And, and I, I, I have to disagree a little bit with Carol. He said that my work is done. It is not done. <laughs> we are not done. We are not even close. We're just getting warmed up. Amen. And that's where we're at. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I've been the youngest member of the legislature for the last four years. And with that come a bunch of accolades that really aren't deserved, that really aren't <laughs> warranted and really don't mean all that much. Um, this award is one that uh, is, uh, this is a big deal to me. Uh, this is something that, um, you know, it, 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 it exemplifies not only what, what I've done, because I haven't done much. I'm one of, what do we at, 55 in the house, Chris? I'm one of 55, right? Hopefully more than that, Chris. It's going to be more than that. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in about uh, 10 days, it's going to be a lot more than that. In the Senate, uh, we're going to increase our numbers there exponentially as well. And I look forward to, to going back down to Augusta. The next trip will be with at least one, hopefully two majorities uh, behind our backs to actually get some stuff done. Um, but th this award really reflects all of us that, that are down there every day that are making so many sacrifices to uh, try to better our state, better our communities, um, and, 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 and work for God. I mean, that's really what, at the end of the day, that's what it boils down to. And we're doing his work down there. And we open up every, every session with a prayer. And, uh, you know, sometimes those prayers take rather interesting tones, Indeed. as Carol can attest to. But, um, you know, it, it, it is, it's the people's house, and it's, it's, it's uh, a place where um, I know the folks that go down there, they, they, they do so with the in intent that they want to help people. Sometimes they just have a different version of what that means to them. Um, thankfully, though, uh, we have folks like Carol and like Terry, who I have to give a shout out to as well, because she does, I know who does all the work in that relationship, let me tell you what. And uh, Terry is, is a godsend as well. And, and, and Carol and the Christian Civic League, um, we, we, w if you think things are bad now, I mean, it's been frustrating, but let me tell you, uh, I know that Carol has had a heck of a time in the last year and a half down there, um, but we were, we were able to, to have uh, some victories, and they took different shapes this year, right? Um, they didn't look like our traditional political victories that you may have seen when we've got Republican majorities. You've got folks like Paula Page, at least to be a backstop on, on some bad things, but those wouldn't have happened without Carol, and those wouldn't have happened without the Christian Civic League, and so we are blessed as a state. I am blessed as a legislator, and I know other legislators are to be able to work uh, with somebody like Carol, um, and, and uh, you know, thank you for your sacrifice as well and your service because you serve the state as well, not, not just with the title. But so thank you. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to receive this award, and I accept it on behalf of all the, the, the legislators that stand up for um, uh, the life issue, the right side of that issue, um, and for religious freedoms and, and all the things that we believe and, and value here. And I have to close with this. Uh, we have a very important decision to make in 10 days. And I know you're all well aware of that. That's why you're here tonight. Uh, that's why you engage. That's why you do the work that you do and, and, and you uh, push as hard and, and fight as hard in your own ways uh, to, to make a difference and, and help to move the ball down the field on these really important issues. Make sure you vote. 
and I know that I'm, I'm preaching in the choir literally here, <laughs> uh, but please, please vote. Please, however you do it, by absentee, whatever way you want to do it, uh, by mail or on election day, but bring your friends. Bring their friends. Bring your family. Talk to your family. If these values matter to you, we need to vote like they do. And we need to make sure that whoever is voting that has the same values is voting like they do too. Because if we don't see a change, we are heading down a path right now that is incredibly dangerous. And there needs to be a change. Uh, and, and I firmly believe that we are within grasp of seeing that change come to fruition in the state of Maine. But we can't do it without you. And politics is a full contact team sport. And we need all of you to be there uh, on our team uh, in about 10 days. So thank you. I appreciate it. Don't go anywhere. Okay. 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 So this is totally unprepared. <laughs> but Trey, you know that one of the things that the Christian Civic League does uh, with one of our partners, the Concerned Women for America, where we assign folks, but then also just encourage in general to pray for our state leaders. So that's both sides of the aisles. You know, we are obligated as Christians, right, to pray for our leaders. But there's a special burden for leadership. Um, and I, I just would ask Trey, uh, if someone were asking you, knowing you got people here that care about you, that are not only gonna vote for you, but are invested in you, knowing that we got even people watching, you know, on Facebook and things like that, if, if, some, if you could tell them something to, to pray for you and legislators that are you know, fighting for the defenseless, fighting for our rights, fighting for the futures of our, our children and our grandchildren, uh, but for, for you, I'm not talking, mm -hmm. you, you've laid out the appropriate you know, 25,000 foot, but what's something that we can pray for specific that people might not even understand that is a need, and it doesn't have to be profound, but I just want, what's a specific prayer request that we could pray for a tray or, and or your peers? Sure. Um, it's really easy to me. Um, it's two things, uh, wisdom and courage. And if, you, if we have the wisdom to know what the right path is, but also the courage to go down that path, and, and those are two inseparable things. You can be wise, but not have the courage to do the right thing, or courageous, but be on the wrong path. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say those two, particularly in this line of work, are the two most important things. Why don't we take a minute to pray right now? Father, I just thank you for Trey. And Lord, I thank you for... Uh, the privilege um, of the relationships that we have, um, some deeper than others, some more familiar than others, some I intimate, Lord, and are um, down there in, on, on the battle lines in Augusta. Um, Lord, a wise request by Trey for wisdom and courage. And Lord, I pray that for this young man. I pray that for his peers that have the same values. Lord, we're all um, targets when we're in leadership. We're not perfect, we have feet of clay. We have weaknesses, we have strengths that you've, with which you created us. Lord, the wisdom and the courage comes in for us to be wise, for us to be circumspect, watching for the attacks uh, that would render us um, not able to be effective advocates for your truth. And so Lord, I. I say amen to Trey's request tonight for courage. I say amen for wisdom. Help us as allies uh, to be able to be accountable to each other and truly be resources to each other in those areas. I ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.